Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are joined today by Thomas from the band Tail Gunner. How are you doing, sir? Hey, dude. I'm good. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. We're going to act like nothing happened in the first two minutes of this conversation. Nothing at all. <laughs> but you guys have a new album out two days ago now, uh, Guns for Hire. Yeah. How's the uh, reception been so far? Yeah, really cool, man. It's um, it's blowing us away actually. Like the amount of people that both pre-ordered and like bought a vinyl or a CD the date dropped and have checked it out with streaming and stuff. Like the numbers have been really, really cool and and taken us a bit by surprise actually. So really awesome. And obviously, the next step for you guys is to hit the road. Yeah, that's right. So we, we've got one more show here in London um, at the Carton Horses in a couple of weeks' time which is like where Iron Maiden started out. So that'd be really cool for us. And then we take a little bit of time off, sort out who the new guitar player is going to be, and then hit the road for like a month in October. So are you guys taking basically interviews for, for a new guitarist? Yeah, we've, we've had the emails open for a little while. And then um, we have a date booked in for auditions. So we've got a couple of guys and of course Rhea that's uh been doing the shows over the summer with us so there's a there's a few people in the mix and we need to just speak to everyone and then we'll make a decision pretty quick um so that we can get back into the rehearsals august and september before the tour so if emails are still open where can people go um they can email us at contact at tailgunnerhq.com and send us a bit about yourself and some photos videos anything that you think is relevant and uh, we'll check it out Perfect. Like, goal is to have this one out quick enough, so hopefully you can get a at least a couple extra people. Yeah, sick. <laughs> and then, yeah, you, you're going to be hitting the road uh, across the UK. Yeah, hitting... and uh, Germany too. And Germany. Well, I mean, what's a better place for metal, right? Right. Yeah, we're, we're really <laughs> <bored of it. laughs> Which songs are you most excited to take out on the road and show to everyone across these two big countries? For me, like, what's actually really cool is that we get to now play the whole debut album in full. Um, so I'm really excited for that in itself because the first two tours that we did when, like, it was, like, the, the tiny, tiny shows when virtually no one had heard of us was, like, most of the debut album and then a few covers and things. And then on this one, we're going to play the whole record and uh, a few other bits and pieces. So to, to play it in full is really exciting. Um the closing track, Rebirth, the, the epic on the album, we've only done that once because we, when we headlined Wildfire here in Scotland a few weeks ago, we basically tested out the the set for the tour and to finally play that song live. And obviously it's a bit challenging because it's like nine minutes long and we put it right at the end of the set. <laughs> and um, yeah, that, that was a challenge, but like it was that was loads of fun. So I'm really looking forward to actually playing that live now that everyone has heard it as well. It's a real uh, test of stamina. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> we uh, we basically have no pauses in between songs when we play live. We just, it's one into the next, into the next. And like, by the time that we got an hour in and you suddenly have to play this nine minute track, like we're all fucking dying on our asses, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so like you said, it's, you're a fairly new band. <laughs> Who are some of the, uh, your favorite bands that you've gotten to share the stage with so far? Uh, well, definitely KK Downing and KK's Priest. Um, that was our most recent show. Like, I remember when the email came through from his manager and it said, like, KK really likes your band. I mean, for us, <laughs> that's totally fucking mind blowing, right? Um, to have such a hero be into our music, super cool. Obviously, Paul Diano was on the bill as well. So, another hero of ours. And um, we played with Warbringer couple of months ago that was a really cool show and hell ripper were on the bill um we had a good chat with them and like i really love hell ripper i think they're one of the best new metal bands around so that was a total total honor to share the stage with them as well and hopefully we can do it again sometime soon and obviously james leads fully into the whole scottish mythology in his music yeah. as well so yeah it's really cool so in terms of guns for hire which i guess outside of the nine minute epic what do you find to be the most difficult song to play? Um, Future's Lost is pretty tricky. Uh, I remember writing that song and I showed it to a friend of mine who's a guitarist. 
and I was showing him some of the riffs and he was like, fucking hell. And I was like, yeah, like that's the verse. So, and I have like some, some backing vocals as well throughout the verse and the, the pre-chorus and definitely to, to play and sing. Cause it's very twiddly is that's, that's a tricky one for sure. But for me, like it's mainly just the stamina of the, the whole set. Cause we, we play quite a bit faster live. And like I said, there's, there's no pauses. There's like, you have to make sure you're in tune at the start of the show. Cause if you're not, you're fucked for like the next. <laughs> right? So it's, yeah, it's the stamina of it all. And obviously you guys are heavily influenced by a lot of the original metal bands, obviously made in King Diamond, stuff like that. Um, I mean, in terms of a live set, what do you think would be the perfect cover song for you guys? Um, well, we we pull out Beast in the Night by Randy, the Danish band. Uh, it's a bit of an obscure one, but what I love about doing that is it's like if 95% of the crowd won't know, then they just think it's like a cool metal song. And then for like the the few people in the, every crowd that know, they're like, holy shit, like, I can't believe they're covering that. So that's <laughs> always sort of fun. Um, We've been doing Painkiller this year, um, which is a blast because, you know, when Sam goes into the intro, it, it takes a crowd like a few seconds to realize what it is. And when people realize it's Painkiller, everyone gets like really hyped up. Um, and then it's funny, like when we, we were opening for KK, we were like, we can't really play Painkiller because that would be like incredibly cheeky. Um, <laughs> so we need to swap it for something else. So we decided on Don't Talk to Strangers. And, you know, obviously all being huge Dio fans, playing that live in front of a crowd that size and having everyone sing it was, that was really, really cool. Would it have been I'd love more... to Halloween, actually, as well. Yeah, Halloween would be a good call. Would it have been more mean to decide to cover something like Bruce Era Maiden with Paul Deanna there? Uh, <laughs> you may have started a yeah, fight. maybe. <laughs> maybe. I was going to wear my World Slavery shirt, but I, I thought better of it, actually. <laughs> But we, well, funnily enough, Blaze was there as well. He was like watching from the side of the stage. So to watch like one era of Maiden next to like another era of Maiden, and I saw Maiden the next day. That was like very, very cool. I had like all three singers in about twenty four hours. Jeez, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, that that is a lot more. I mean, how do you get your head around that at that point, right? Yeah, it was well, it was it was crazy. Like Blaze actually asked us to sign a copy of the album for him. And like there was a point, this is like after the show where we were stood there waiting to just load out, and there was KK and Blaze flicking through the CD, going, "Oh, that looks good. Oh, that's cool." And I was just like, "That's the moment when you're stood there, and you're like, is this fucking real? Like, is this actually happening right now?" So, following the the next tour, what's the next plan for Tail Gunner? So, we just brought in um, Dragon Productions as a booking agent. Um, really really cool for us because they book for some wicked bands like michael schenker exciter gamma bomb really cool acts and um the plan now for next year is to concentrate more in europe um people have been asking for so long like practically since we started can we come and play this country in that city and whatever and i so far have booked all of the uk dates um to try and book a eu tour myself would be a total nightmare so uh to now have be working with the dragon guys and working with bar our booking agents really cool so that's the plan for 2024 is to try and get onto the festivals in europe to play club shows around them and see what we can make work with support tours as well because we we're still yet to do a support tour it's like the first uh the first support show we ever did was with warbringer and the second one was with kk so we're not really a band so far that has gotten into supporting other acts but that's something I'm really, really looking forward to because now the album's out, we have a little bit more leverage with that sort of thing. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, it it obviously helps for you guys being quite, you're really picking up steam, especially across the UK. So any band that do, does have a few UK dates, it's like, well, we're your local draw on top of... That's, that's the hope for sure. Who is your bucket list band you would like to go on tour with outside of Maiden because Maiden is now cheating <laughs> um, realistically Airborne I'm a huge huge like self-professed Airborne fanboy um, I remember like they their debut album came out just as I was getting into rock and roll and heavy metal and seeing the video on the TV and stuff and they're about a decade older than me and they were a band that 
they always were my proof that you can still go and do this like old school rock or heavy metal in the modern day and do it like to quite a large scale like they've done so they're always real heroes for me. I really rate them as a live band as well. I've never missed a tour. So opening for them would definitely be a dream come true. Yeah, that, I mean, it would fit. That's for sure. I think so too. Like, I think it's, you know, convincing a few different promoters or whatever that just because they're like the ACDC thing and this is more like a metal thing. In terms of the energy and the crowd, I think there's more crossover than a lot of people might actually think or might expect. Yeah, no, there there definitely would be. And I think thanks to stuff like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, a lot of metal fans know Airborne and know some of yeah. like the heavier, rockier songs as well. And they're like a super intense live band as well. Like they're a lot more intense than a lot of metal bands. Like. <laughs> yeah, th I mean, they do, I think, step it up a little bit, like speed up and, and just play louder, pull, pull the Lemmy thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. In terms of the idea of hitting festivals next year, assuming that comes to fruition, what do you think the the main songs you would want to take to a festival are? Uh, certainly Guns For Hire, the title track. Um, it's my favourite song on the record. And for me, like it, it's about the band and it sums us up very well. Like I was looking, when I wrote that, at, say, Rose Tattoo, Have Rock and Roll Outlaw, which is about them as a band and about being like a, a fan of that style of music and lifestyle. And we have Guns For Hire, um, which is all about us and about being a fan of this style of music in this day and age. So that's a really important statement and something that certainly the people that haven't heard of us before, that's one I'd want them to hear. Um, we have a blast playing White Death Live because it's the fastest song, it's the heaviest song as well. Uh, Crash Dive always goes down really well. Uh, we have a lot of fun playing that live in the, the mid section when it gets to the, the non stop just riffing that changes all the time. Like, that's a good one live. And like I said, I'm really looking forward to playing Rebirth again, too. Which is obviously, you, you got to pick and choose where you can put that in, especially when it's not a headline show. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you, you really got to read the crowd on if they want a nine minute song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess with that in mind, when it does come to going out on, on the road, um, if you were to play as a support act, do you think you would take a nine minute song into that into your set or would you kind of play it by ear? Uh probably not. I think we'll probably leave that one for like the headline shows or longer festival sets. Cause yeah. it's like I said to the guys, funny enough, before we did the steel mill with with KK's Priest, it's like we played songs that weren't necessarily out at that point as opposed to some that we had released as singles just because those songs have more energy live and it's like realistically i think if you see a band as a support band and you love them you don't necessarily even remember the songs you might remember like one song or something that they played and then check them out later but ultimately the thing that people remember is the energy and the show that you brought so i think as a support band that's certainly more important yeah it I mean, it definitely is because it's true. You don't really remember the song so much. You might remember one riff here or there and be like, oh, shit, where's, where's that song? What album's it even on yeah. sometimes? Yeah. Uh, and, and then, yeah, obviously, next up is the UK tour as a headliner and Germany. And then hopefully festivals and all the other big stuff and maybe support tour. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, let's let's keep fingers crossed. <laughs> Where can people keep up with you and and keep track of everything that you're doing? Uh, so we're on obviously all the social media like Facebook, Instagram, and we have a YouTube channel as well. All of those are at Tailgunner HQ. So those are the the places that we use, and like we post every single day on Facebook and Instagram. We're always on the story and then in DMs and stuff. We're like super active, so that's the best place to keep up with us. It's always nice to see a band that will actually communicate with the fans. Well, yeah, it's, it's so important. It's like something that, you know, when we started, I always took that from Metallica. Like, I'm not actually the biggest Metallica fan, but I think they've been a band that have always treated their fans really well. And I've always kept, like, the fan experience in mind. And I think if you can do that for people, and it's certainly, it's like, at our level, like, I consider it to be super fucking easy. Like, we're not a big band yet, so it's not like, 
we're bombarded with all this shit. It's like you have the time to actually like reply to people and talk to people and, you know, appreciate the fact that they like what you do. So that's that's super important to us. Yeah, I mean, my ba- my favorite thing about Metallica is the amount of effort they just put into just researching themselves, really. You mm-hmm. know, Lars looks up what songs they've played in every city. And when the last time they played, you know, Creeping Death was, it's like, okay, well, we haven't played it there. So people probably haven't seen it. Throw it yeah. in the set. Yeah, it's, it's such a very cool thing to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, last but not least, do you have any final notes you'd like to leave with your fans listening in? Uh, pick up the album if you haven't checked it out yet. Um, obviously, you can stream the whole thing now on YouTube. Um, we've got picture discs, which I'm waiting for my one to arrive. I'm really excited about that. Uh, blue vinyl, clear vinyl, CDs. And if you like what we do, spread the word. Let's keep heavy metal alive. That's the most important thing. Word of mouth definitely keeps keeps every band running. Hell yeah, dude. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I very much appreciate your time, and I very much appreciate you joining us. And you. Thank you.